SQL injection attacks are a well-known vulnerability in web application security. They involve injecting malicious SQL code into web applications to manipulate a database query. But today, we're not talking about any old SQL injection. We're exploring the more covert and complex technique of blind SQL injection. Unlike classic injection techniques where an attacker can see the results of their attack directly, blind SQL injection is a little bit different. The blind aspect refers to an attacker injecting malicious SQL code without getting a direct response or error from the web application. In essence, we're navigating the database blindly. So why does this matter, you might ask? Well, even though an application may not reveal information, we can still retrieve data by sending specific requests and observing the application's responses or behavior. This type of attack can be slower due to its iterative nature, but it's also more subtle and therefore can often slip under the radar, making it a good vulnerability to hunt for if you're doing bug bounty. By the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of how to find and exploit blind SQL injection vulnerabilities. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's dive in. It's a weird thing, but it seems like Alex loses his accent when he does ads. In today's video, we're going to be talking about SQL injection, which as an attacker is really fun to find. But when you're running a development team, it can be a nightmare to have in your program. That's where Sneak comes in. Sneak automatically scans your code, dependencies, containers, and configurations, finding and automatically fixing vulnerabilities in real time. So here's how easy this is. You can use my link, sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. Come to the landing page here and hit sign up. Once you're signed up, you can come in here and add a project. I'm going to select a project from GitHub. And once your project's imported, Sneak finds your vulnerabilities and you can fix them with just a click. Watch this. I come into here, I can open a fix PR or a pull request. And Sneak opens fix PR so you can merge and move on. Plus it does it all from your existing tools, IDEs, CLI, repos, pipelines, Docker Hub, and more. And look how easy that was to just do a pull request with these issues in hand. It's amazingly fast. So what are you waiting for? Come check out Sneak and find out if there's any vulnerabilities within your projects. It's free and you can sign up using my link at sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. Before diving into a demo, let's explore the theory a little bit more. Since we don't get a direct response with the data we're querying for back from the application, we need to rely on the application's behavior. And there are two main techniques to achieve this. Boolean-based attacks, which is just true-false statements, and time-based attacks, so delays of 5-10 seconds, for example. In Boolean-based attacks, we'll send SQL queries that will result in different page content or response from the application depending on whether the query is indeed true or false. Time-based blind injection attacks relies on sending SQL queries that force the database to wait a specific period of time before responding. By observing the time it takes for the server to respond, we can infer whether the payload injected was true or false. A few things to remember about blind SQL injection are, they are often time consuming and require a deep knowledge of SQL. Often you'll need to be able to know or enumerate the structure of the underlying database and automation or scripting comes in very handy. I should take a moment to say tools like SQL map can make finding and exploiting blind vulnerabilities a very easy and quick process, but there are situations where these tools won't work. For example, any basic web application firewall or a novel SQL query which doesn't have a matching payload will cause your attack to fail. Let's take a look at a hands-on example. So here we are at our vulnerable application and something that I talk about a lot when we're doing web app pen tests is looking for odd behavior. Immediately I can see that when we refresh this application, we get this welcome back message that wasn't here before. And especially with blind SQL injection, things like this that show changes in behavior, so whether the message is there or the message isn't there, can help us verify true false statements. So let's take a closer look and see if we can verify this injection point. I'm just going to come over to Web Suites, clear the history, just refresh this page again, and then come over to here, control R to send to repeater, and here we are ready to go. So I'm going to send this and the response we get back is 11451. And if I search for the welcome back message, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, we have one match and here we have it. 
So in this case, if we mess with this tracking cookie, so for example, I'm just going to add a single quote to try and break the SQL, and we send this, we actually get zero matches. So we don't get the welcome back message. So next we want to verify, can we actually get solid true false statements out of this? And we might have to try a few different payloads if we don't know what the underlying database is. So having a look at a SQL cheat sheet and understanding the differences between Oracle, Postgres, MySQL and SQL Server is really gonna help you out here. So all I'm gonna do is and one equals one, and this should return a true statement. So we get our match because the application has found the tracking cookie and also one equals one is true. And if we try and one equals two and send the same thing again, we see that we get zero matches. So here we've validated that we do have blind SQL injection. Now, there are a few ways to proceed from here and it kind of depends on how much information you already have, as I mentioned before. But coming back to the instructions here, we do have a little bit of information about the table, which is users, the column, username and password, and we're looking for the administrator user. So we can proceed with this objective. In other cases, we might have to do some more enumeration on the tables and the column names. So let's verify if the user administrator actually exists in the users table. And to do this, all I'm going to do is keep my and statements and I'm going to select a single character, let's say A from users where username equals administrator like this. And then I want this select statement to equal a. And once again, what we can do is we can verify our true false statement by changing this. So if I change this to B, so select B from users where username equals administrator and compare this to A, we'll get a false statement. But as they match, we should get the welcome back message. And we do indeed get the welcome back message here again, as we can see there's one match in the corner. So what we want to do next is verify the administrator's password character by character. So comparing the first character of the password to A, then B, then C, then D, and when one comes back as true, we'll know that that is the first character of the administrator's password. I think we'll do the first one manually so that you can see the process and then we'll look to see how we can automate this for the rest of the password as well. So I want to come back to my statement and select substring and we want to select the password and the first character and the length of one from users where username equals administrator. And we want to compare this to A once again. So to reiterate, this statement here is selecting the password and the first character of that password and only one character from the password where the username equals administrator. If I change this to three, this would select the first three characters of the password. And if I change this to four, for example, this would select the fourth character of the password. So if the password was Jeremy, this would be J and this would be E and this would be R. And then we compare that to this here. So if this is correct, if the first character is A, we'll get a match and it'll display the welcome back message. If we don't get a match, we'll get zero matches. So let's quickly do this manually and see if we can find the first character. All right, so we found J and as you can see, we have a match down here. So we get this welcome back message. So we know that the first character of the password is J. Now doing this takes quite a long time and uh, we're not actually sure how long the password is either. There are some techniques to try and get the length of the password, but usually when I'm scripting this, once we run out of characters after going over the length, then that indicates the length as well. So we don't necessarily have to check the exact length of the password. So I'm gonna send this to intruder by clicking control I. I'm going to clear all of the selection and what I want to do is I actually want to change both of these. So I'm gonna mark the character space here and also the end character as well. And the type of attack we want is cluster bomb. So this attack uses multiple payload sets. There is a different payload set for each defined position up to a maximum of 20. And the attack iterates through each payload set in turn so that all permutations of the payload combinations are tested. So let's select this and then come to payloads. And first up, we just want zero to nine, I think. And if the character is longer, we can add some more to this. 
And then the second payload set, we want to add A to Z and also 0 to 9 as well. I'm not sure if there are uppercase in here, but we'll find out as we go. We'll click Start Attack. And that was pretty quick. So what we want to look for is the length. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different responses. So here, most of our length is 11499. But at the top, we have 11560. And if we look at payload 1, for example, we indeed have the J again. So let's filter by the welcome back message. So I'm just going to hit welcome into here. And then all I'm going to do is order them here. So the password is J8WTGR. CC. And you can see that we got to 9 and then it stopped. So I'm just going to close this and hit discard because it was quite quick. Come back to here and then just add 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So from here I'm just going to open up mousepad and I'm just going to look down the list and type it out. So I'll just do for example, J eight WTG. And you can see we have this password. So I'm just going to copy this, come back to our application, click on my accounts, type in administrator, and fingers crossed, it's the correct password. And we solve the lab. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, then hitting the like and subscribe buttons really help us out. And I'll catch you next time.